This wrapping paper from Dollar Tree has got me inspired. Keep watching. I'm Brandy, and this is Making It My Own DIYs. Welcome back. The first project today will be our spooky romantic wall decor. All right, I am going to use some of my 2X Ultra Matte Paint in black. Any type of a metal finish paint and a chip brush. This beautiful paper from Dollar Tree. Gorgeous wrapping paper. I'm going to use something thick as a backing. I just have a piece of very, very thick black paper. And then this frame that we used last year to make a Halloween DIY. We're going to use it again. All right, so I laid this down. What you see on the inside is the, the inner circle is the size of the inside of that frame. I wanted to give it at least an inch above that so that I could put this over the back and give it sort of a shadowy look underneath. So you can see my struggle here. These are very sharp scissors, but I am really, this is how thick this paper is. Maybe a very thick cardstock. So just continue around. And this is the oval that I have when I'm done. It doesn't need to be perfect because it's going to be on the back. I'm going to lay it down on top of my paper. And you know Dollar Tree paper is very thin, so just be careful. Um, my usual technique of dragging the scissors will not work on this. And then I am going to place this paper over, just making sure that I have my pattern somewhat in the middle. Um, if that doesn't matter to you, then you can just totally not even worry about that part. Okay, so now is the time of year to get your glue sticks on sale. Go to Walmart. They probably even have some on clearance because most of the kids have started back to school. Here in the South, anyway. I like the purple because it shows me exactly where I'm putting down my glue. And that is important because I want to be sure that I can see where I've been and make sure every area is going to be covered. I want a good, good grip from the glue onto this very thin paper. Nothing should be coming apart. Do it all the way to the edges. Okay, so then I am going to flip this over on top of the paper. This is why you want a little extra on your edge so you can get it exactly where you want it. Because like I said, fragile paper, you don't wanna do anything that's gonna stress or tear it. Okay, so I've pressed it down and now I'm gonna take my little squeegee and this is a Mod Podge squeegee and it's kind of a flexible rubbery type material. It works really great for this on fragile pieces of paper because it won't tear anything. Well, so far it hasn't torn anything. <laughs> okay, so I'm just gonna make sure that I burnish it down all the way to the edges making sure that if there are any little lumps of glue that I've worked those all out to the outside. That way we don't have wrinkles and bubbles. I will trim off a large amount of this to make it a little more manageable. And I like the edge when I use a sanding block. So this is how I'm gonna get that nice clean edge. Just using a sanding block. Y'all have seen this done before and I do it all the time. But if you want to just use your scissors and fussy cut all the way around, you can do that too. Because really, once you get this backing on, you're not going to see your edges. This is just a personal preference for me. I am just going to continue around, make it nice and smooth all the way around. And it kind of gives it, you know, it adds to the age look of it when you kind of fray it off like that. Okay, so here is this painted in the beautiful matte black. Gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. We're gonna make it even more gorgeous. There's so much detail in here that you can't see, right? Well, we're gonna fix that up. So there are some screws in the back of this, assuming that this was probably a, maybe a picture frame or a mirror at one point. I'm not exactly sure, but I know that this frame itself is like a resin, very flimsy, very lightweight, which makes it convenient when you go to the thrift store and you're buying by the pound. This didn't weigh very much at all. Okay, I took the screws out because I need something to rest my backing on and I can make a wider surface to put glue down if I use these little building blocks. So they happen to be the perfect width to go down in that little channel and rest over the areas where the screws were. So we'll have a nice flat surface so that we can apply glue. 
Now, just in case, go ahead and paint those black. If your frame is black, if it's white, then paint it white. That way, when you uh, look at it from all directions, you don't see the wood block under there. You don't want to see the mechanics of it, right? So you're going to add glue to each of those sections and then pop your frame back on. And this is how it's going to look so far. I want to be sure I give good before pictures so that you can really tell the difference when we spruce it up. So I'm going to use this Rich Espresso on the frame and I'm going to use this tarnished silver, it's like an alcohol spray. I think you use it mainly for crafting like paper crafts, but it gives such a nice patina and aged look that I like to use it on my older projects. I also, uh, or the things that I want to appear antique, I also use this when I'm doing bones. Um, to make the bones look, you know, aged in a proper way. Okay, so when I get it on there, I'm just going to dry it with my little tool here. Get it all dry. I don't want anything smearing. So here's that rich espresso I was talking about. I have bronze colored paints, but I don't have anything that looks in the, it doesn't look like the depth that I want in a bronze. And I think that this over the black is going to be like the perfect solution for that. And you can just tell me what you think. I think it definitely looks bronze, like an aged bronze. If you use that chippy brush and you just start going side to side, side to side and sweeps all the way across. I'm not trying to get down in the cracks in this situation. This, the black is gonna be down in all the spaces and this more of a metallic color is gonna sit on the high points. So it makes it look like it is sort of a tarnished look. Look how beautiful that metallic paint just brings out all the detail and the beading, the little filigree on the side, the shape of it is just highlighted um, in my opinion with this is so pretty. I had originally pulled out a like a tarnished silver paint to do this but since I'm changing my room into something that is more of a dark and moody theme I thought I could use this in my room so I wanted to make sure that it fit into kind of the aesthetic that I'm going for which by the way is not very textbook dark and moody it's definitely not dark academia because I don't have books everywhere but you know I'll be sharing some of that stuff with you guys as I go along now See, now the paper is too stark white, and we want this to look a little more luxurious, more like a damask. So I am going to just kind of brush this all over, and I've barely got any paint in the brush, just barely. Put it in the, the centers of the little floral pieces uh, along all of the details. I want to go around the outside where there's like a lip that's like almost an inch between the front of the frame and the backing that I'm working on right now. And it gives it a shadow around the edge, which to me is so beautiful. I love it. It looks old and, and vintage. Just, I love it. So now I've just got a bath sponge that I've torn into pieces. I like to use it when I'm doing different techniques with paints. And uh, I really like this. You just, when you dip in, be sure you offload some and then just kind of twist that in your hand back and forth to change the pattern. If it's something that is very, obvious like if I was putting a very dark color there's no way I would want to pounce it in the same pattern because then you would see that there was a pattern and that's not how aging works right so now I'm going to go back over it and if you get too much of a color on there for your what you wanted you know maybe you you make a boo-boo and it's not exactly what you're looking for go back over it with some gray easy all right, now we got some skeleton arms from Dollar Tree. I'm playing around to see because I know I want these hands to be together in some way. And they will clasp. You know, you can put them together like this. It's pretty nice there. I know that I want to do this on that frame somehow. So I'm just thinking about it. Okay, I'm going to take this satin paint here. This is heirloom white. I absolutely love this color. And I'm going to spray paint those bones. They're going to dry thoroughly. That's only one coat the front, one coat the back. Then I'm going to take this spray and I'm going to start spritzing this on here. This is going to give, again, that aged look that I like. And it's going to give it a more of a realistic look. Now, I could speed right through all of this because some people don't want to be bothered 
watching the process they just want to see how it ends but for those of you who watch my channel who do these things on your own um because you can't maybe you can't find the type of decor that you really enjoy so you want to do your own then you need to see exactly how to do it right and i don't want to rush you through it and feel like you're overwhelmed and you can't do it because you absolutely can do this okay so there'll be very little increase in speed here i want you to be able to see what we're doing so i'm going to spray that on i'm going to pat pat it off do not rub because it will make the entire bone gray and that's not the that's not the idea you want to let it dry in between layers yes this process does take a little time but you can put it in front of a fan or if you don't have a lot of humidity put it in a direct sun outside and help these things to dry so once i have enough of the spotting on there to my taste i'm going to start building my layers of antiquing wax the areas that would normally catch grunginess and dust and dirt are going to be where all those small bones are so I'm going to go in there and just darken those areas. I know that I want those low spots to hold some color. So I'm just going to tap this on. If you prefer using a chalk paint uh, for your projects, you can do that too. But beware that when you start fooling around with putting any moisture on chalk paint, it will start to um, flake off or lift. So just you know, keep that in mind. That's why I prefer a uh, spray paint for this. Okay, so now it's just, again, I'm going in all the spaces, all of the little dark spaces. I'm making them even darker, and I'm just going to build up slowly. Um, you can see already how it's beginning to look a little more aged. I'll do some wiping with my sponge on top of here. And if you don't have the antiquing wax, remember there is a recipe. I wouldn't even say it's a recipe. I just tell you how you can use coffee to stain uh, things while you're crafting coffee or tea. So, I mean, you, you can definitely do it that way if you prefer. But I've, I've had this bottle of antiquing wax forever and I'm still, I'm still using it all the time and there's a lot left in there. So, you let these layers dry in between, otherwise you're just smearing around the same paint. And that, that's just kind of a waste of your time and your product. So, just continue along. I'm going back over where the joints are and where those little bones are and in between the fingers because I want to show some shadow. I don't want everything to be comical in this. This is not like a funny Halloween. This is more of a living a spooky life situation here or if you do prefer the dark and moody, something like this would be perfect. And in fact, all the little projects that I do in this video today are going to be appropriate all year long. But you can definitely use these at Halloween if you like. So now I've gotten my sponge and I'm going to start just stippling that on. I'm just pretty much just popping it on here and there, twisting the brush or the sponge rather with that antiquing wax and then pouncing it up and down. I don't want to rub off anything that I've already put on there. I'm going around the edges of the bone and I'm also going to go um, making sure I go in between the fingers. Now the back side of the hand and bone you don't necessarily have to do because you won't see that. But definitely the sides. This is not a difficult process, right? It may take a little bit longer to do to achieve. But you know, you can always work on different projects in between while your items are drying. That's what I always try to do. And then when I get ready to edit, I just splice everything together in a way that would make sense to somebody who's watching it. So if you do want to show this entire bone or you're not exactly sure how you're gonna lay it down, go ahead and extend that over just a little bit. Too much glue, uh, no, too much wax <laughs> on the fingers will make it where you can't glue it down to your surface. And I'm going to need to secure it in some way, but you can use mounting tape for that. So, you know, there's a way to get around everything. But look at the bones now compared to how they were when we first started. This is definitely a big difference. Now, once they're completely dry, I'm going to take them over to my frame. Now, if these bones were more narrow, I could tuck them right inside the frame in that little gap that I was talking about. I could do them like this and put them together, or I can cross them over one another. And that's what I decided to do. And I'm using mounting tape. So I'm going to use a little bit of that mounting tape right behind the 
where the bone begins to get narrow. And I'm gonna press it down onto that beaded area. And then I'll go to the other side. And what makes it convenient is the shape of the frame has little pieces on it that are symmetrical on both sides. So I can count down those and know exactly where to put the other bone so that they're even. This mounting tape is really nice. You can definitely get it something similar to it. Alien tape, I believe somebody told me is what it's called. And you can get it at Walmart. So I'm just going to go in with my glue and put it together. I don't want the glue to necessarily be showing. So if you if you do get any glue on the outside, you know, try to get it out there really quickly so you don't tear your paper. And I'm just going to flood a little bit of glue between the joints of the fingers so that it catches the other hand and it can dry. But you can certainly use your mounting tape here if you want to as well. Now I want to put a very beautiful romantic arrangement on the inside. So I have, uh, when I was thrifting recently, I found two beautiful roses. This, this big purple rose and then there is a rose bud as well. I am going to just poke these right into the framework of those clasp hands. I'm not going to be too concerned about, you know, putting foam or anything in there. We're just going to glue it in. I don't want this to be a big, busy arrangement. I want this to be something that uh, is pretty simple, but still elegant, beautiful. These dahlias are from Dollar Tree. Going to cut these off. And then all I'm doing right now, I'm not using glue. I'm just pushing these around on the frame to see how I want to arrange it. I've got some of those black leaves out of there. I'm going to use those too. Uh, later on, I do add some purple leaves. You'll see that in the end screen. And you'll use the same process with gluing it down, you know. So this is why we don't glue them first. I'm going to move things around a little bit and decide how I like them. And then I can add my glue. I think it looks much better like that. So maybe the lady of the house uh, is a bride. Hmm. Maybe she's in love. Maybe she loves gardening. Who knows? But she's represented right here. And that beautiful, beautiful Dollar Tree paper is what inspired this entire look. Yes, just a roll of paper. But I knew it had to be prettied up and used in a project for you all who love your everyday spooky decor. Now again, I'm going between those fingers and I'm just kind of flooding a little bit of glue on all the flower stems that are down in there. And then I just individually glued down the, the black ones there, the black leaves. I've got some gorgeous, this is like a velour or velvet ribbon that came from Hobby Lobby. And I got it for 50% off, I think beautiful ribbon and I knew that I wanted to use this. It's in the Christmas section, but I knew I had to have it for spooky decor. So I'm just going to do a very simple bow and I'm going to cut this off. If you don't want a bow for your little bouquet, you do not have to have a bow, but I really wanted to add this fabric. It just gives another little bit of texture and interest to the project and it's all about, you know, making it your own. And so I did add in this little ribbon. You could also put something in the middle of the ribbon. If you wanted to put a spider or rhinestone of some sort in the middle, that would be pretty too. But I think, yeah, I think I am very happy with this and I think it is the look that I was hoping for. Everything looks good together. You could always brush a little bronze over your leaves if you want to, but I don't have to have everything matchy-matchy. You can come watch my videos on Mondays and Thursdays. It's 6 p.m. It is free to subscribe. We'd love to have you as part of the family and talk to you in the comments. The next project is a creeping vine candelabra. I found this oh, at the Goodwill's bins. I cannot believe that this was going to be just passed over by everybody. And when I saw it, I thought, oh yes, that's going in my bedroom. I'm going to clean it up and give it a makeover. So I've got some wipes and I'm going to decide whether I want to use this Rich Espresso again 
or if I want to attempt to change it up a little and use a little bit of Martha Stewart's paint in a bronze color. The bronze to me is just pulling a little too copper. I don't mind copper, but I want all these pieces to be something that can be used together and all look nice together. So I am going to kind of do it my way. Definitely do it your way. And if you're going for more silvers, instead of using the bronze or the espresso that you see me using, just switch it up for the paint that you choose. All right, so I'm gonna just use the top of this to decide which paint I like best. And you remember what I said about it being a messy crafter? Well, yes, I'm finger painting in it. I think I like the darker one. I just like it, it's richer looking, and I don't want this to be brassy at all. So this color is gonna be perfect for me. I'm grabbing a chippy brush here. You can use the same one you used on the other one. I didn't even have to paint this. It was already gorgeous after it was wiped off. So I'm just going to just touch this up. I'm going to add this all over. Again, I like to start off lightly and then I just kind of look at it and decide whether or not I want to add on. It's just for me easier to add to it than take it off. Either way, you know, if you make a mistake, you can definitely fix it. So I am trying to make sure that when I dip in that paint, I don't leave any, a, uh, like puddles on the brush. I don't want any heavy, heavy, heavy amount on there. So that's why I tap it all off. I try to tap it off so that it leaves the same amount in the brush all the way across. And then I use a couple of different ways that I move the brush. Uh, you saw me do big brush strokes, kind of slow, and then as I'm adding on more, I'll move the brush side to side uh, quickly, and that gives it a little bit better of a coverage, but also keeping it muted, which is what I like. I hope that made sense to you when I said it that way. I hope that made sense. But the finish is just beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. I can't bring myself to do the brasses and the, the golds just, just yet in my crafting journey. But most definitely, this the bronzy colors and the coppers, that's where my heart is. I just, I love warm, earthy tones, and this is just, oh, this is beautiful. This is so beautiful. And, of course, it's going to need an equally as beautiful candle to go on top, right? We don't want to let this frame down by putting something on there that does not serve it well. So this is a two pack of candles that are battery operated, two double A's. Get your batteries wherever you want. These came from Target Dollar Spot. I assume they had a $5 sticker on them. And uh, I got them at either Goodwill or Dirt Cheap, I can't remember. And then I'm gonna take that spray, that same alcohol spray, and I'm spraying it on this waxy finished candle and it sticks on there just fine. It really does. And as far as the spray where I got it from, I found it in some scrapbook and stuff at Goodwill. So I don't even know where it comes from. So this is what it will look like. The next project is going to be an aged bronze owl. If you guys have been with me a while, you know we used this owl in a red and black arrangement last year. I'm gonna use him again. Now he was originally spray painted, but I'm gonna go over him now with some black chalk paint and I'm gonna mat it down some more. I'm gonna give it more depth by making it darker because it just, I didn't spray it all the way through. This is a, originally was a white owl and I do not know where it came from, but just substitute whatever you have that you wanna use. You can use an owl, a bat, a crow, a raven, um, anything that says dark cottage core to you, if that's you know what you're going for, then go ahead and use that maybe a little more on the goth side. I'm gonna make sure that he's thoroughly dried all over. And then I'm gonna address his eyes. Put on my spectacles to address my eyes. Y'all remember last year when I did him, I didn't do anything to his eyes. I left him completely black. Well, so many people made suggestions on how to make these eyes just pop and look gorgeous. And I decided that today I would give him some beautiful glowing eyes. So here he is, and I'm putting on that rich espresso right into his eyes with a little brush, and I'm just kind of chasing that shape out 
with that small brush. See, I'm taking my time. I'm not speeding this up. So you can see, it takes me a while too. And then trying to maintain that shape inside this other eye. And then you can always clean it up if you make a mess. Just take your time. If you have a paint pen and that's easier for you to use on this type of detail work, just use those. And then I just use my finger if I get a little too much and just tap it off. Looks fine. You can always go back over it with a little black chalk paint once it is completely dry or black permanent marker. All right, we're gonna give it a minute or two for those beautiful eyes to dry. And then I am going to start making him look beautifully aged. Now you can see, look at that. Look how much. I didn't get enough paint off of there because I'm working on a tiny little surface and I didn't pat the paint out right. But you don't have to worry because there's a way to fix it and I will show you how to fix it shortly. All right, again, adding on, brushing off, adding on, brushing off. And you can see that on his, there, I think it's on his chest maybe, there's a spot that is just too dark. I'm gonna fix it with some black paint. See there on his chest and then on his head. You can leave it like that. You know, if you wanna leave it that way, you can certainly leave it that way, but I wanna tone it down just a bit because I'm trying to give it like the hint of it without just being crazy, crazy with it. So I'm trying to brush it out just a little bit. And if you can't brush it out enough, go ahead and grab a little bit of your black chalk paint on a smaller brush, tap it off, and then just kind of use it to blend it in. Like you blend your makeup on your jawline, just blend it in. And then if you get done with the process and you think, I hate this, let it dry and paint completely over it. Not a problem. I just knew he had to be part of this family. I knew he needed a makeover and he needed to be with this set of Dollar Tree paper items that we put together. Had to be, absolutely had to be. He fits in perfectly with the set. All right, the next project is going to be a bronze pedestal candle. So here's the other candle, the shorter one of the two. This is a jar lid, which I painted with black chalk paint. Here is a candle sleeve or a hurricane. And then a thrifted glass candle holder. I also have a little bit of that paper from Dollar Tree. I'm going to first use some Goo Gone or alcohol or acetone, whatever you want to use, to get off the writing on the bottom, and then you're going to wash it with soap and water and thoroughly dry it. The back of this paper has lines on it and a grid on it, which makes it perfect for you to do these types of crafts. They're really going to help you out with that paper. So I'm just going to kind of measure by laying it down. I'll cut off an even amount to wrap all the way around the back of the candle. And then right along the edge of the paper, there is like a, a print line. I'm gonna cut that off too. I did consider that when I was measuring the length to put it on the, the candle. So I'll just trim that all off. And then here's our piece of paper. Get your design the way you like it. I'm gonna take my little hurricane here roll it if i have a little overlap that's great that's what i'm going for you don't want a lot so trim it down where it just goes over maybe an eighth or a quarter of an inch over i'll use my double stick tape that i happen to get from dollar tree press it down on the glass this way we're not waiting on mod podge to dry we're not worrying about wrinkles this is the perfect way to do this and then if you want to change it later you can change it out easily I'm carefully pressing that down into half of where the tape is, leaving the other half of the tape exposed to stick this page on. Now I had it a little bit crooked, so I had to adjust just a little, and that's okay. I had a little tear on the back side, but it didn't tear through, thank goodness. And I'm just gonna press that down. And trim off, if you have a little extra tape, you know, hanging over, you can trim it off. Then you can grab the sanding block and get it right close to the edge just like you would any other project it just like it was if it was a piece of wood just be sure you hold on to it good so you don't drop and break it i'm gonna do this all over the top 
and then I'm going to go along and do this on the bottom as well. I don't want anything hanging over because I want this to be rich and elegant looking. Look how pretty. Oh, this paper is beautiful. So here's our clean candle. I'm going to use this as the top. And this, is, like I said, is just a jar, a jar lid. We want this to appear to be one piece. So we are going to stick it together. All of my E6000 glue was clumped up and dried. If you have tips on how to keep that stuff from doing that, please tell me because I have so many tubes I had to throw away because I can't use them anymore. So I grabbed this super glue from Dollar Tree, questioning, questioning whether or not it was actually going to hold these two together, but I gave it some time. This is a little multi-pack you can get at Dollar Tree. And would you look at that? It won't even wobble. Perfect. So I'm going to grab that chalk paint. This is just a rich black and I'm going to tap it off and I'll use this little pouncer to go all the way around my edge. I'm just rubbing this on. If you have makeup, the little makeup sponges, you could use those also. Use the flat edge. I'm just going around the edge of the white, the edge of the glass so that it looks like one piece. And then you can pick your little hurricane shade up and you can extend it a little bit down the sides just to continue that aged look that we're going for. Okay, so I got the top. Now I'm gonna kind of smear it on the side a little bit, make it look old. It makes that print stand out with that rich black next to it. And we're gonna do the bottom too. See how that just really finishes it off? I love that. I love that edged look like that. So we're gonna let it dry just like that. And then the process that we used on the inside of the frame, we're gonna use the same process here and make this beautiful and rich looking as if it has been in an old home on the walls forever. My niece does Sims games and she did a build that recently had some black wallpaper in it that was gorgeous absolutely gorgeous i don't want my room to be that dark i want it to be a little more foresty looking you know but uh yeah i sure appreciate the look of it that's stunning All right once you get the look you want i'm just gonna go ahead and spray this on now after i've done the paint you can do it either way you're not gonna hurt yourself either way and i'm just spraying it on top of a towel that's a you know just a rag i use here in my studio if you have any runny spots, just tap them off. If it runs on your page, that's totally fine. It's part of the aging process, right? So look how nice this looks together. It looks as though it was made as one piece. And I love that it now looks this black color, which really brought it together. And now we're going to add that espresso. Again, I'm starting off slow. So I'm going to start on the bottom in that rim right there on the edge and just flick that back and forth. I'm not looking for a solid painted line. It's just, again, brush strokes. And I guess there is sort of a pattern to it, you know, but I'm not trying to get like an even amount. We want it to look like it aged this way. I'm gonna go back and forth on the rounded parts just to keep that rounded look. It just makes sense that it would wear in that way when it is wiped and clean. Then I'm going to go around all the beautiful curves. Y'all, I ordered lamps, new lamps for my room, and they have the amber, like a teardrop in the inside of the, you know, the standing part of the lamp that makes a night light. So you can turn the light on and off, and you can also use the amber night light. Oh! That's going to be perfect for fall when I am watching movies in here in my room by my hot belly stove. <laughs> Can't wait. Okay, so I've built it up about this much. And what I do is turn it back and forth and I add more on in the spaces where I feel like it needs more. And it shows me if I've left anything off, go ahead and address that and cover that. So that's what I'm doing here until I get the coverage that I like. And then of course you are going to let it dry after you do that. 
I don't need necessarily with the process that I'm using to color the top of it. It just didn't feel right to me not to do it. So I went ahead and um, worked on that top too. And I'm trying to kind of keep it circular. Now, if the sleeve that you have doesn't fit perfectly over the top, mine fits like perfect. There's no extra lip, nothing. Um, I am going to secure that down with some hot glue and I do it in four different places. I let that dry thoroughly. I mean, you really, really need to let the glue dry. If you use the candle top that is bigger, a little bit bigger than your sleeve, you'll be better off, I think. But look at it with the candle on the inside. And we didn't have to do anything special to the actual candle insert because we have this beautiful frame. Okay, y'all. Look at the beautifulness. They all look so good together. I really like these projects. I would love it if you would subscribe to this channel if you're not already a member of our family. And if you like the video, it tells me that I need to make more content just like this. Also, if you really enjoy this video, consider sending it to somebody and sharing it with them who might also enjoy this type of content. We want more people who are desiring these items and these DIYs to be able to see them. So if you know somebody who enjoys them, there seems to be kind of a missing, I don't know, like a missing area where people are not finding what they want and what they ideally would like to have in their home. I want to be able to show it to them. At least give them some options, right? That's what we want to do. We all want to find some joy in our home. And although it looks different to different people, you know, what brings you joy is not going to be maybe what brings the next person joy, but that is okay. It's a personal thing, right? This may be your thing. If not, I have lots of videos on other types of Halloween crafting and spooky decor and whatever that you might, you know, that might tickle your fancy. I love, love the look of this candle. I absolutely love love it and it looks to me like a, an authentic metal piece you would never know that that is wood and glass until you drop it and that's not a good thing y'all remember november is subscriber appreciation month and we're going to be lots of do, doing lots of good giveaways plus we've already passed the 50k and i owe y'all a giveaway so be watching the videos so you don't miss your chance to throw your name in the hat I would love to hear your comment about these crafts. If you are someone who lives the spooky life, not only in October, but all year long, I would love to know your opinion of this and if this was something that you would put in your home. If not, and you're a viewer looking for Halloween DIYs, perhaps haunted house DIYs, and this is something that you like, I would also love to hear that. I thank you so much for stopping by, for getting some inspiration, for grabbing these ideas to make your own. There's a little box down here in the corner that I want you to click next because I think you're going to like it. Thank you so very much for stopping by and I'll see you soon. Bye.